who's the rudest to fans? Anyone here? No, no one, one in here. here. No one in that group. Yeah, no. Okay. There's a new feud between two Summer House castmates. Plus, just because The Real Housewives of Beverly Hills is over doesn't mean we're done talking about it. The latest revelation since the reunion concluded. Hey everybody, it's your host Blake McHugh and welcome back to another Shared News Update. I've got my friend Morgan Wright with me to break down all of the Bravo headlines of the week. But of course, before we do that, make sure you hit the subscribe button and ring that bell so you never miss any of our future videos. I feel like the last few weeks, Morgan, we've been doing these Bravo headline panels and we have had so much to talk about. I love it. Bravo never sleeps. There's so many shows. There's so many feuds. It's like very hard to keep up with, but I I love it. So hard to keep up with, but then also kind of makes our job a little bit easy because then we're not like pulling at scraps to be coming up with, with headlines right, right. and things to talk about. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's get into the most fresh news feud of the week, considering this happened literally last night. Amanda and Lindsay um, from Summer House are... They're just not not getting along at the moment. Here's the background for people that don't know. So Amanda and Paige from Summer House were on Watch What Happens Live. Andy asked who of her castmates is the rudest to fans, but it was showing the Winter House cast. So neither of them really had an answer because who they were thinking wasn't being shown. Andy offers up Lindsay Hubbard, to which Amanda confirmed. No, no one, one in here. That, no one in that group. Yeah, no. Okay, who's jumping out at your head? Oh, Andy. Lindsay. You're gonna... Lindsay. I didn't say that. Amanda just nodded. Yes, yes. It's Lindsay. Yeah, she can be. Yeah. Really? Yeah, from wow. my experience. Girl, you're going to get an uncomfortable Rude. time. Later. Listen, I... It says not as of recently, but she has seen her be rude to fans when she's like caught off guard, out in the wild, whatever. Now, obviously, we know Lindsay, that's not going to sit well with her, and she doesn't stay silent. So she went to Instagram right afterwards to basically call out Amanda, saying she's been a huge supporter of Loverboy. She's posted photos at a handful of meet and greets events that she's just gone and volunteered for out of the goodness of her heart to support her friends. I know that you are a Lindsay stan. We love Lindsay over here. So I got to know what you thought when you when you heard Amanda say that. Oh, I have a lot of thoughts. I mean, where do I even okay. begin? Um, yeah, I mean, I've met Lindsay twice now. Uh, she and Carl are both amazing humans, um, especially at BravoCon. I know it's a different environment as well, but uh, Lindsay, Carl, and I had very long conversations at BravoCon. She was the one and only Bravo Lab to really go out of their way to say hi to me, sneak me into VIP rooms. I mean, she made my BravoCon experience. She really did. Um, so according to this fan, she has been and everything but rude to me. She gave me my best, the best day of my life. Um, that's not really what was in question with Amanda. It was uh, more like, you know, out on, on the street or in a coffee shop yeah. or whatever. Here's what I don't like about this is that, um, you know, let's just say that it's true, right? And, and there was an instance where Lindsay was caught off guard and it didn't go over well. Lindsay was not one of the choices on the panel, right? It was about winter house castmates. So even though Andy kind of said, Lindsay page said, I didn't say that. And Amanda immediately said, yes, she didn't have to do that. She could have very easily been like, Oh no, we're not going to go there. This is about winter yeah. house. But she very, very quickly offered Lindsay up on like a silver platter. And I think Lindsay's reaction wasn't necessarily about that one particular moment. Um, I think it was an accumulation of constantly feeling like she's being attacked by these other women. The I mean, think about yeah. the last reunion. Paige wouldn't even look at Lindsay. Remember how awkward that was? Remember mm -hmm. Amanda and Paige walking off the set, uh, you know, talking smack about Lindsay that she then had to rewatch. You know, there's drama going on between Danielle and Lindsay. We don't know what yet, but there are people commenting automatically saying, oh, Danielle has seen the light about Lindsay when you haven't even seen it play out yet. So I just think Lindsay is over the constant yeah. 
antagonizing of her for what reason? And, you know, in her response, she said, I've been nothing but supportive. I'm tired of you guys dragging my name through the mud. Um, she's like, go clean up your side of the street because mine is fine. So while I did appreciate the clap back, I think it's much deeper than just one answer yeah. from a watch what happens live. Isn't it weird though, that because Carl, Lindsay's now fiance, is partners mm -hmm. with Loverboy, with Kyle and Amanda. I feel like it's weird when, like, you shouldn't go for a business partner's fiance. And I thought, were they not on good terms? Like, did I not see photos of them together on BravoCon? So it feels a little, like like weird yeah yeah and i think that's how Lindsay feels too is that you know the last picture that Lindsay posted in her instagram story was a picture of amanda and Lindsay at bravo con which was two weeks ago holding hands laughing yeah. at each other um i didn't see a whole lot of interaction but i did see uh Lindsay, like go out of her way to talk to amanda at bravo con the two were laughing like everything was good so i think she was just you know, caught off guard and, and Blakely, exactly what you said. It's never good to cause a divide in a business relationship. Look at the Toms in Katie and Ariana. Mm -hmm. They are now getting divorced because maybe not because of Tom Sandoval, but there definitely yeah. is a role playing in that. So you really don't want to see them go down that path. I think Lindsay just feels like they are constantly poking the bear with her and she's had it. Do you think she's done with? Summer House, Winter House, any future filming? I think it's interesting that they didn't go to the Winter House. Um, I think it was mm -hmm. for the best, obviously, because Carl is focused on his sobriety. That's not a great yep. environment to be in as a sober person. And Lindsay, supporting her fiance, decided not to do it not for drinking. the same reasons. Yeah. Um, I think that I, this is going to be an unpopular <laughs> opinion, I know. Um, but I think Summer House boils down to Lindsay and Kyle. They started the show. They pitched the show together. You know, they're the ones that created it all. They're the ones that the friend group centers around. So I want to say no, because they have a, a sense of ownership over it. Right. I don't think, okay. I think Lindsay's going to be like, oh, you know, Paige and Amanda are going to go before I go. This is my show. Yeah. I'm the one who, you know, started it, whatever. Um, that being yeah. said, I also wouldn't hate to see Lindsay and Carl move on to like the rebooted Real Housewives of New York next season. You know, For they're sure. getting married. It's it's a different vibe. So I don't, I don't know. Um, but it's, it's interesting to think about. Well, we'll have to keep an eye out. I'm sure we're not going to be done talking about this. I feel like there's going to be more something, some responses from somebody. Oh, and by the way, I did want to mention because Luke is now jumping in um, and defending Lindsay. He posted a photo of Lindsay with fans and a different lover boy or something. So it seems like there's mm -hmm. more people getting involved. And I think that maybe we're just at the beginning of it. Um, okay, so let's get into Real Housewives now um, because something that I'm really curious about is if Erica Jane planted the homophobic slur story. Um, and I think a lot of people forgot that it was like months ago when the, when we were first hearing rumblings about Kathy's meltdown, one of the potential reasons was, or not reasons, but one of the stories about the meltdown when they first came out was that she used a homophobic slur. But for some reason that got, it either didn't get enough traction, it got shot down too quickly. I feel like people kind of forgot that that was a potential part of what happened when, or what went down. Um, so then we come to the reunion and Kathy's saying, you know, nobody else heard it. And Erica's saying, well, you only said it to me. So if Kathy only mm. said it to Erica, then how else would the story have gotten out? Yeah, I think the only other thing that could have potentially happened is you know there was an hr investigation so whoever yes. knew in that mm. circle maybe but wouldn't that be technically okay. against everything that an hr, HR person policy? is supposed to do yeah, <laughs> yeah. so uh, i don't think that's too likely um but yeah no i've seen that i've seen that comment a lot online that you know it was erica said she went directly up to me um and you know kyle in the finale said you know i heard it came from your camp so your it's camp. like what 
Yeah. What details specifically was it? Um, I don't know. And I, unfortunately, I don't think we'll ever know. I know no. it's a serious matter, but for me, it's really hard to, um, form a concrete opinion when we don't, we didn't see any of it and we're not going to see any of it. Apparently there's no, yeah. there's no audio, there's no video of it. So it's like, what else can we do besides formulate our own opinion and move on from it? Yeah. I mean, like Kathy said, you know, she has more credibility than Erica right now. So, <laughs> but I just thought that was interesting. And there obviously was the rumor at the end of the, at the end of the season. And then it, car it kind of carried on a little bit into the reunion that possibly somebody from Erica's team was leaking stories, which I believe that Kathy said she doesn't think that that was true because mm -hmm. um, Nikki and Erica share the same publicist. But there, mm -hmm. I guess there's the argument of at this point, more than one. If Erica is saying this on TV, that this is what Kathy did. She certainly is telling other people and it could have been leaked, I suppose that way as well oh i mean i have friends that run bravo instagram accounts that claim lisa renna was in their dms talking to them about pushing the aspen story like while they were filming and and you know lisa wow. renna went on a huge blocking spree of mm -hmm. bravo accounts um i i wasn't blocked i don't really know why because i don't like lisa renna and i've made that opinion very known <laughs> but i do have friends that were like you know lisa renna was in my dm saying saying this is what happened in aspen you should talk about it on your pages and now they're blocked so Okay, so something is adding up for me now that has not added up for me in the past because I follow, you know, these different Bravo accounts and somebody was commenting about how their account was blocked and they can't see their messages. Was that, is that the reason why they got blocked? Because Lisa sent them a message and then the block makes it so you can't see what those messages were? I believe so, ah. yes. Yeah, because when you block wow. somebody, you know, their whole profile is like disappeared forever. So their messages wouldn't show up either. I'm having like such an enlightened moment. Like <laughs> it's all making sense. <sighs> aye, aye, yeah. aye. Okay, well, I like you said, I don't think we're getting answers from that, but it is a very interesting perspective. Um, sticking with The Real Housewives, Andy uh, actually offered up an apology to Garcelle this week. Um, now, it's over part two of the reunion where they were talking about Erica throwing Garcelle's book in the trash. Of course, the conversation quickly diverted because Lisa admitted that it was actually her photo and she was the one who had trashed the book. Um, the girls then start laughing about it. And then really the whole point of the topic is just completely lost. Um, and so I want to just read what Andy had said on his radio show. He said, quote, I've been listening to everyone's feedback about the reunion and I really need to sincerely apologize not only for diverting the topic, but for not returning even worse to the serious conversation that was had. I have a lot to say about Andy during this reunion. I felt like he was a little disconnected and out of touch with the women, their feelings, but specifically Garcelle, because there were a lot of really serious topics that were surrounded by her. And also, I feel like things that were said that shouldn't have been said that just, I don't know, I, I don't felt I felt like he wasn't paying attention to her emotions or controlling the conversation accurately. I don't know if that was your feeling from it. Yeah, well, I mean, I think Garcelle's reaction kind of said it all, you know, and the fact that he's more preoccupied with laughing and giggling about it with Erica and Lisa, that didn't sit well with anybody. Yeah. Um, I also feel like we don't see a lot. I mean, they start at 6 a.m. and they don't get done until midnight. And so, you know, is yeah. there maybe some editing continuity in there that we didn't get potentially? Sure. Um, but also, I feel like if, you know, fans had a lot of feedback when it came to that. And, you know, if Andy is going out of his way to publicly apologize, I think that maybe he saw what viewers saw and, and yeah. said to himself, OK, I need to apologize to her for this. I don't know. I just felt so sad for Garcelle in that reunion. I've been oh, wanting to yeah. talk about and it you with know, somebody like it just hurt my heart. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I think that she's totally right in the sense that if it was anybody else, the situation would have mm -hmm. been treated very differently. If that even happened to, if it happened to Kyle, it would have been one of the main points of the reunion. If it happened to even Doree, you know? Um, and, and I feel the same way about what happened to Garcelle's sons. Like if that yes. was Kyle Richard's daughter, we would not hear the 
end of it, not only from Kyle, but from Lisa, from Erica, from Dorit, like, you know how they are. And I just feel like Garcelle did not get the same amount of support that other women on that show get. And it was pretty obvious. So obvious. I mean, even think about, think about uh, how much conversation the book throwing got, how much light it got. And it was because of Amelia's mention, which by the way, was already on TV, already aired. It wasn't something that was a new revelation. It wasn't talking bad about mm -hmm. Amelia. It wasn't doing anything negative, but because she was mentioned and kids are off limits to Lisa Renna, it was a huge deal and blown out of proportion, if I might add. And then we have this whole conversation about the book throwing that got so much more light than than Garcelle's children. And like, and Lisa even got lawyers involved and had Garcelle print a different edition of the book and change things for one week before because her daughter was mentioned, even though it was something that already aired on national television. Mm -hmm. But th then, but there's not the same outrage and passion towards defending Garcelle and supporting her when her child is getting death threats. And they're laughing about Erica mm -hmm. telling him to F off. And it was just absurd yeah you know and and even like kyle's reaction to that where she's like when i watched it back you know i thought it was horrible and i'm like but why but did you, you should have had that reaction yeah like it's not funny whether you see it or not like if it was portia yeah. it would be the end of the world and you know a lot of people i know people are super pissed at lisa renna she's not my favorite right now either you know she made that huge deal about amelia being mentioned in the book Garcelle recounting something that happened on camera that everybody has already seen. And then literally, literally three days before that airs, Lisa Renna goes on her Instagram and posts things about Paris's abuse. Like it's just too totally. I mean, how can you on in one second, get lawyers involved, have your daughter's name removed from a book over something everyone has seen. And then in the very blink mm. of an eye, post something shaming Kathy Hilton's parenting choices and talking about Paris Hilton being abused at, you know, Provo Canyon, which she's been very vocal about too. But I just think Lisa Renna is like spiraling like crazy because she's, she's, she knows that she's at the end of a rope. Yeah. I mean, and the kids are off limits. <laughs> so <laughs> she's just, she's just ridiculous. Okay. Let's put reunion to rest. Um, but still talking about the Real Housewives because, I mean, what else would we be talking about at this point? Because there's, again, so much going on. Teddy, your favorite person, is inserting herself into the mix <laughs> once again. Um, she did a QA and a on her Instagram where someone asked her if she had the power to shake up the cast for Real Housewives of Beverly Hills, who would she choose? So this is what she said. She goes, she thinks that Bravo should bring back herself and Brandy Glanville. Oh, my and she God. Thinks... <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah. And she thinks Denise Richards should come back as well, but only if she'll show up to work and actually work. Now, here's... Okay, before we get to her reasoning, what are you thinking? <laughs> In what universe does Teddy think it's a good idea for her to go back on the show? I mean, really, really. <laughs> Apparently I agree this one, with, Morgan. I know. I agree with Denise. I would love to see Denise come back. I would love to see every scorned housewife from Lisa Renna. I would love to see mm -hmm. Lisa Vanderpump. I would love to see Yolanda. I would love to see Denise. Hell, I would love to see Camille Grammer come back as a friend of, and I know that she is off her rocker too. I just think uh -huh. it's time for a reckoning, you know, like we all want to see it. <laughs> Um, okay, so here's here's what she said uh, as her reasoning. She said, because of BravoCon, some friendships have shifted and she wants to see some fun again. So I'm think I'm not sure if she's thinking that she's bringing the fun, um, but I'm thinking that because we've got Lisa and Erica, you kind of have Dorit and Kyle, like maybe Teddy fits into that equation. I mean, I didn't mind Teddy. I know you didn't love her. I didn't mind her. And I do feel like with her new podcast on two T's and a pod, I feel like she's had more of a voice. So maybe she'd come back in, not as a pipsqueak. I, yeah, I don't know. I just, I think that ship has sailed. I think Teddy, keep doing your podcast, girl. You're crushing it. No, and no offense yeah. to you whatsoever. Cause I know, I know the hustle is hard, but 
I, I just can't imagine a world where she would want to. I mean, people are so I mean know. to her. And she also said a while ago on her podcast that she wouldn't ever film with it again because, um, and maybe that was because she was an actual cast member. She was working for Entertainment Tonight, but she was treated really poorly at an event where she was like working for Entertainment Tonight and she was covering, I think it might've been Kyle's um, opening of her store in Palm Springs. And mm -hmm. she said some of the other women, because she was on the show, basically like were, I guess, making her feel less than. It would be interesting though, if Brandy and Denise were on the same season, considering the affair allegations, but mm -hmm. I just don't want Brandy on my TV screen. I don't know if that's I an got unpopular enough of, opinion. Yeah, here. I, no, I got enough of Brandy on Ultimate Girls Trip. If I want to see yes. more, I'll go back and rewatch it. Um, but I'm here exactly. for Denise. I hope that she does come back, truly. And I'm here I've for heard Denise rumblings as well. that she's open to it. She is. She said on Jeff Lewis's podcast that she's open to it. And she said that she would go back in a most Jeff Lewis was back in September, but most recently this month, she said she would go back even if it was the exact same cast, like with Lisa Rinna there, she would go back. So I don't think it's totally out of the cards. Um, before we wrap up though on Bravo headlines, I do feel like we need a quick honorable mention um, of something that's just sort of starting to like trickle in. Katie Maloney from Vanderpump Rules is sort of, calling out Raquel, which I feel like I'm surprised this hasn't happened earlier with this Raquel Tom crossover. Um, but in like a recent comment somewhere, she basically called, uh, cause Raquel's wearing this Tom Tom jacket. And uh, she said, started out as a fan of the show and now is a fan of the Toms. And I was just like, ooh. <laughs> well, here's some tea for you. When I ooh, was yes. in the VIP room at BravoCon, that was the moment where Tom Schwartz was there, Katie Maloney was there, and Raquel was there. And Raquel was wearing the same Tom Tom that, you know, she's posting on Instagram now. The thing about these Bravo mm. VIP rooms is that the talent knows who's going to be in the room at what time. Um, so Raquel knew that Tom and Katie and herself were all going to be in the same room at the same time. And these are small, intimate gatherings, right? There's only 10 to 15 Bravo yeah. Lebs in there. There's only 100 fans. So it's definitely a choice. And let me just say that, you know, Katie, Katie calling Raquel a fan on Instagram today is not the first time that I have heard her call Raquel a fan of Tom. I think mm. that is genuinely how she feels. She said it at BravoCon when she wore the Tom sweatshirt in the VIP room. And she's like, what can I say? She's a fan of the Toms. And, and that's it. And I, I honestly love that clapback because Katie's, she's calm, she's cool, collected, but she's getting yeah. a point across. And yeah. um, somebody else who's coming for uh, Raquel Hard is Lala. So I'm excited for season oh, yeah. 10 because Lala has talked a lot of crap, a lot of smack, both at BravoCon and on podcasts and everything else. So I very much so feel like it's Lala and Katie versus maybe Raquel and Sheena. Um, so we will I'm see. I'm kind of nervous for Raquel. She just gets bold. I mean, I know she's putting herself in this position, but oh, she no, does, no, no. she's you, not I equipped do to not. stand up to Katie and Lala. <laughs> I do not feel bad for her at Oh, I really think that this is a ploy for her to get some screen time on it. And this is no shade to her whatsoever. But what has her contribution been on Vanderpump Rules other than being James's girlfriend? You just proved my point. There has been nothing. a puppy, a puppy shower. That's the only thing that she has added to the show in however many years that she has been on it. So the girl wants to get a paycheck. She wants a storyline. And what better way than to hook up with the newly divorced OG, whose ex-wife is also an OG. I mean, I think it's all pretty calculated. Okay. Drop well, the mic. We'll just leave it Sorry, on Raquel. That then. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <gasps> um, that's going to be it for our Bravo headlines. I feel like you and I said so much during this panel. So you guys got to let us know, what do you agree with us here? Disagree? What are your thoughts on everything that we talked about from Raquel to the 
Gosh, I don't even know what we talked about. Andy's apology. <laughs> Who do you want to see back on Real Housewives Lindsay of Atlanta? I mean, there is just so much. I mean, literally, I'm, I already forgot where we started. Let us know <laughs> your thoughts down in the comments section. Um, of course, give this video a thumbs up because you know you love everything that Morgan and I have to say. So you might as well show some love with that thumbs up. Hit the subscribe button and ring that bell so you never miss any of our future videos. I'm your host, Blakely McHugh with Morgan Wright. You can see our social media handles on the screen. Drop by, give us a follow and say hello, and we will see you next time.